with uh, Hector Estrada from Umbro. He uh, works for them in the product uh, division. So, Hector, please tell us about yourself. Yeah, man. So, I'm here uh, actually at Iconics, and we are the brand owners of Umbro. So, uh, we bought Umbro from Nike um, a while back, and we're trying to um, reestablish the brand to its uh, original glamour, mm -hmm. if you will. Um, as you know, the brand started in you know, 1924. Uh, it's that kind of brand. That kind of brand, Manchester, UK. We still have um, headquarters are actually in Manchester still. Nice. Uh, so what we have here in New York is a satellite office um, that handles Umbro US. We handle the whole the whole globe, mm -hmm. uh, but our focus here is US. We still get direction from. The UK. That's smart. And we, we want to keep it that way. Uh, um, history and heritage is really important for this brand. Um, and, you know, having the office in Manchester is really important. Yeah, tell us a little bit about, about the, his, the history and heritage. I know when you got the, the, the company back from Nike, that was one of the one of your uh, mantras that you wanted to bring back that history of, of what Umbra was, you know, going back to the 1930s and stuff. You know, which is why we put a lot of emphasis on keeping headquarters in Manchester. Mm -hmm. um, again, because you know, because of the heritage of the brand and, and the essence of what Manchester brings to the table and the, the passion and the excitement around football in that city mm -hmm. uh, can really be replicated anywhere in the world. Yeah. So um, it's really important that we keep. You know, um, we feel that it's really important that we keep the root of the brand still in Manchester. That's good. That's good. And, and thanks, everybody, uh, for giving us the little hearts thing. Uh, I'm your kid in Periscope. We're on both uh, platforms now, so thanks for joining us. Um, so, what do you do exactly for the company? Like, what do you what do you do day to day as a product manager? So, I'm the merchandising director for the men's team. And uh, we have men's divided in two sections, if you will, two divisions. We have sport and we have fashion. So I'm one of a handful of people that work on both fashion and sport. And um, Umbra, of course, holding under sport, um, all the merchandise that the brand produces, uh, I guess, is under my supervision. Okay, so merchandise, basically, right? Merchandise, meaning products. Um, and, and retail um, efforts. Okay. One of, the, one of the newest products you guys are launching is the Velocita Clean, which has been getting a lot of buzz on, on the social media channels. Uh, talk, talk a little bit about that. Well, it's the lightest boot that Umbro's ever produced. Uh, first of all, visually, it's beautiful. You know, from a design standpoint, you look at it, um, it almost uh, it reminds me, I'm always looking at cars and product, and a lot of product people we get inspirations from cars especially if you're in the men's uh, product development yeah, you know like definitely. it's just you gotta uh, a lot of designers and a lot of the humble guys we also we take a lot of inspiration from cars so it almost it almost reminds me of a Lamborghini Diablo with like the, the straight lines and the angles and the, the sharp you know uh, surfaces mm -hmm. it's sort of you know it's, it's clean sharp and uh, it's efficient. There's, there's nothing on that boot that doesn't need to be there, you know. And that that is all done to to make sure the athlete. That's not it, right? Is that something? No, that's not it. We, unfortunately, we don't have all right. the the. Well, that was, 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 was just show some uh, an example of what of what an umbrella clean looks like. Pretty out there. So the, you know, the, obviously the the most does a little bit less, um, you know, crazy in design. It's yeah. more like a. It's more streamlined. That's the geo flare. Okay. It's kind of like it was designed to be out there. You know, it was okay. also designed to be clean to uh, have patterns on it. Um, mm -hmm. But the velocity is just uh, it's it's under 170 grams. Um, it's um, it's designed for um, speed, mm -hmm. but it's also designed for um, stamina. Mm -hmm. So it's so light that you could run with it for hours if you want it. And it's also if you look at the bottom, if you look at the plate. Be specifically designed so you can move in um, in, in all directions, quite, quite frankly. Yeah, I mean, uh, the velocity, one of the, the difference between this model and the velocity is that the 
envelope was small, so it's really, really clean, very, very fashionable looking. Um, I'm just looking, you know, just touching this, the, the footbed, I mean, I guess, is really, really comfortable. I mean, that's, that's very important. You, know, you, you don't really see that a lot in, in, uh, you know, in some of these cleats, but this looks like a very comfortable model. Ellis, what do you, what do you think? I'll agree. <laughs> yeah, that's where, yeah. And that's obviously like that's one that's probably the most out there colorway. Yeah. It also um, we have a more subtle version that's uh, sort of like white gray, like a like a tonal camel. Mm -hmm. um, but that's definitely uh, that's out there in terms of color. Okay. Sure. So it's just you know part of the heritage of the brand is about. Um, yeah. I know Mr. Humphreys always used to say that you know products not only have to perform and be up to par in terms of. Techn you know, technical aspects and performance. Yeah. Everything had to be stylish. Okay. You know, like that's who's one, who's that's, Humphrey? He's the founder okay. of, uh, of Umbro. Nice. Uh, yeah, so 1924, Manchester, UK. Um, he started very humbly uh, in, a, in a beat up wash house in Manchester. Um, and by 1934, mm -hmm. uh, he started mostly with sportswear. Yeah. Um, and obviously, being from Manchester, and being a football fan himself, mm -hmm. um, he started Umbra as a uh, sportswear company, but always leaning towards football because that was his passion, of course. Nice. So, and in 1934, we produced our first um, kit uh, for Manchester United. Wow. Um, and he just, he was so beautiful, he was so out there, and him being a, a, a fashion person and having the style that he had, he basically again his uh, all his products had to perform, but they also had to look good. But, you know, he needed to be stylish. If it wasn't stylish, mm -hmm. he didn't put it up. He didn't make it. So the the uh, Manchester UK in 1934 was so stylish that it caught the eye of a lot of the clubs in in the UK. Mm -hmm. So by 1966, 85 percent of football clubs in England were wearing right. number. That's that's crazy. Yeah, and you, again, you, these, these are things you never would never known about. But I'm, you know, I knew it was a very you know big brand. It was, like, it was from England, but you know, I, I love these like origin stories because they really get you to know what what, what the brand's about, you know, and, and where you guys are heading with it. Um, but in terms of where it's heading, uh, in terms of in the U.S., how do you see the growth of of the of, uh, of soccer in the U.S. And have you seen any any like examples of? The growth of, of soccer, you know, with, specifically with the brand uh, here in, in this country. Well, I'll give you sort of my personal experience, and then I'll tie it back to the brand. Yeah. Um, I remember, so I, I have a 15 year old who's a youth soccer player. He plays at the premier level, right? For for youth. What's his name? Um, Casique. Casique. Okay. Yeah. So Casique plays, you know, youth. You know, if you're a soccer parent, you know the passion. Oh, okay. yes, yeah, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy, right? Like, you go to some of these youth games, they're more exciting than, than the Premier League yeah. game or La Liga. Yeah, yeah, you know? Crazy. So, uh, sometimes the parents get a little bit too crazy. Oh, yeah, I've seen that. <laughs> you know? Uh, and, and, but, you know, I remember, you know, when he started playing about 10 years ago, and I remember vividly, I was in Barcelona. And I was traveling with a bunch of business people, a bunch of product people. And uh, we were having dinner and drinks at a, at a club. Uh, uh, not at a club, more of a, like a restaurant bar. Mm -hmm. And the World Cup was taking place. Um, and I remember them talking about the U.S. team. Like it was, uh, you know, I, I think the U.K. was playing um, the U.S. Mm -hmm. And they were happy about it because they were like, oh, you know, that's an easy win. Mm -hmm. Right? And... Well, where now, if you say you're playing the U.S., it's different. It's different. It's, you know, 10 years later, it's a totally different story. Yeah. So I think, personally, the U.S. as a team is probably one of the most improved programs, yeah. if you will, if not the most improved program, where, you know, again, 10 years ago, ago we didn't matter, and now we're relevant. Yeah. Now you tell a team, you know, you're playing the U.S., they're like, oh, you know, we got to get ready for that. Yeah. You know, 10 years ago, it was like, okay, we're running through those guys. Sure. <laughs> so, yeah. So, so one of the guys, one of the stars of the national team, U.S. national team, is actually one of your guys, uh, Mick Stesker, right? Yeah. So he's one of our guys. He's sponsored by Umbro. Um, he also plays for, you know, 
to the Merkel. Uh, no, NYC. NYC, yes, NYC, yes, 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 yeah, yeah. So yeah, he's one of our guys. We love having him as a spokesperson. Um, he uh, he plays for the national team. He's number ten. He's young. He's got a lot of potential, and he we like him because he's bold. You know, he, he's a he's a very bold player. Um, with a lot of potential, I mean, incredible potential. He's got lots of style, mm -hmm. you know. He uh, he's got lots of flair, and that's some of the things that we look for in a player. Um, you know, going back to uh, you know the U.S. and and, and, and soccer, or football, mm -hmm. and and uh, the I think the the progress has been crazy. Like now, you can't you can't go to a town without them having a soccer program. You know, I remember when, I, when my son started playing, we couldn't even get uh, fields, you know, because, you know, most of the fields that we used were American football fields or baseball fields. And we had to wait for, uh, you know, the because, you know, American football, baseball, those are big sports. Yeah. And in these towns, you know, they used to get the permits and we used to get the leftovers. But well, now it's totally different. Oh, yeah. You know, now even if you go to certain towns, now you got um, you got soccer assigned fields, which is something that we didn't have to use. That's really cool, man. You know, like I, I know my son played for um, for the local people. He played for Ironbound for a season, and you know Ironbound has the, their soccer fields. Man, their soccer fields. They yeah. have okay. for football fields. They yeah. have baseball fields. Soccer. Their soccer fields, and they're beautiful turf. You know, so yeah, like to see that. Jersey, man, you got Cody Lloyd, you got a couple yeah. of players from the U.S. Women's National Team yeah, who kill sure. you, you know, this yeah. is definitely, Jersey is definitely, you know, one of the major, I mean, who else is from Jersey? Um, Tim Howard? Tim yeah. Howard's from Jersey, he plays for Everton, Everton is one of our teams, yeah. you know, you like how I did that, right? <laughs> yeah, so, um, this guy knows what, he, what, he, what he's doing. We try, we try. Um, but, you know, I was, again, I'm from Jersey, I'm not from Jersey, I'm from Puerto Rico, but, you know, I've been in Jersey for 20 years. So I kind of take pride in Jersey now. I pay taxes in Jersey. So, <laughs> You're from Jersey. I'm from Jersey. I pay taxes there, right? So, you know, we always brag about Jersey. I mean, we, we go out of town to some states, and, and that's when you realize how how heated the competition is in Jersey. Yeah. I mean, Jersey soccer is really competitive. Oh, yeah. I mean, just the tri-state. So Jersey, New York, you know, um, there's some great clubs in New York, too. So um, it's so competitive in the tri-state area, and we produce some amazing players. And still, you see it. Um, I mean, you see it now. Some of these kids, when we travel, besides some states that are crazy, like you know, LA is amazing. You know, California is crazy. Yeah. You know, Arizona. Like, there's some states that are really like mm -hmm. crazy, country, really great. But um, besides that, Pennsylvania is some good guys. You know, uh, there's a lot of Jersey's definitely. Uh, out there. Yeah, Alex, any questions? No. Um, kind of part of it. As I recall in the 1990s, Nike was trying to break through the cyber market in Europe, and many people uh, somehow uh, criticized that move or were skeptical. Now, we all know that soccer is a, is a traditional sport, and its tradition, as you said, uh, the birthplace of soccer in England itself, 1966, the, the time when uh, England won its one and only World Cup. A few, uh, few soccer fans know that. England refused to play in the World Cup because they thought of themselves as, as far more superior than uh, than uh, other teams. It was only in a friendly play, if I could recall against Hungary, that they were outplayed and, out, and outscored, where they decided, oh, let's, let's, let's fall back a bit. Let us compete in these World Cups. Yeah. And they started competing. And uh, Casey Point, 1966, uh, the, the World Cup in, held in England and won by England and one of their, their sponsor, Umbro. Uh, since tradition, as I said, is critical to soccer fans, uh, I think Umbro does have uh, its strongest element is that it's uh, it's really a traditional soccer brand, if not one of the only soccer brands. Uh, that's very popular since the early 19th century. How how is uh, Umbro uh, going to tackle a market where soccer is not its most popular sport? How will they, they come and tackle not only the American market but also the Aussie market, let's say, the up and coming markets, yeah, or the Asian markets? Yeah. So, I mean, I think. Before you answer that, if anybody out there has any questions, definitely hit us up, and we'll try to answer it about about Umbro, about any any of the you know you got Everton, they have uh, West Ham, uh, Olympic Paranaense, 
uh, Ercila, Lenz, uh, who else? Team team. Gremio, the uh, National of Uruguay, uh, PSV. So they have, they try, they have some West of the West Ham. Yeah, West Ham, absolutely. Friends, Peruvian uh, national team. Peruvian national team. Is, 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 we'll talk about it before we went on camera. How beautiful the the Peruvian national team jersey was for the Copa America. It was, it was amazing. We got, we got a new one coming out. Yes, yeah, probably be hot too. Yeah. So, if any questions about that? Definitely hit us up. We won't go ahead, answer that. Yeah, man. So, um, I think one of our greatest assets is our heritage. Um, being involved in branding for all of my career, um, one of the hardest things to do is to develop an emotional connection with your consumers. And um, that is something that Umbra already has. You're talking about over 90 years of history. So, that could never be, that just can't be replicated. Um, those 90 years can never be replicated. I mean, we have, you know, Pepe World the brand. You know, we have so so many of the greatest, you know, yeah, George um, Beth. Exactly. I mean, we have so many. If you, if you go on YouTube, you're going to see so many amazing goals, you know, with people wearing Umbra back, you know, all throughout the history, right? And, uh, you know, I give an example, um, and I hate to keep going back to my own experience, but my son's coach, is from Israel, and uh, you know the, when he found out I worked for Umbro, he's like, "Oh my God!" The first pair of boots that I ever wore were Umbro, and I remember my dad, you know, showing showing up with those boots, and I remember how how I took care of them, and how I wore them until my feet, um, I, I grew them to the point where like I was, you know, happy <laughs> and I couldn't. They were probably yeah. like one size smaller, and I was still wearing them. So, you know, uh, Pepe, you know, one of the players, you know, you know, Pepe is now, you know, he, he's our spokesperson for the Specialia tournament. And, uh, you know, for him to, to do that, it, it was just such a natural uh, thing to do. It was such a natural conversation. There's a beautiful video on YouTube about Pepe and his father talking about his first pair of boots were Umbro and how his dad had to save money for months to buy him this pair of boots. Mm -hmm. How he had to save money, he had to um, take extra work, he had to, um, I guess he was uh, he was in a line of work where he had to travel. So while uh, some of his co-workers were staying in hotels, he was, he was sleeping in his car. Wow. You know, he had to borrow money from a neighbor or a co-worker I believe. So he could buy these boots for for Pep, mm -hmm. and these are things that you know. This history is and this emotional connection that that so many people have with the brand with Umbro uh, could never be replicated by anyone. You know, another thing that we have is that we are specialists. We don't do any other sport. This is it. You know, so you got World Cup. You got this. You know this, you know, soccer specific events. Um, is this global? Is this local? Or well, right so right you can say football? You can say football, yeah. Like, okay. right like 49 people watching, definitely watching in, in and out there. They're honest. And there are district, that, I think New York I didn't tell you how many people are on there. Right now it's 49 people watching. Got it, so uh, I'll say football then. So, yeah. you know, um, 40. so you have around all these, you know, global, or even local football events, you have a bunch of brands. But once these events are done, they go back to doing baseball, basketball, lacrosse, every single sport under you know the sun, right? We don't. We go back to do football. We only do one sport and one sport only. And we have no plans whatsoever to do any other sport. We're Football, diehards, mm -hmm. 34, I mean 24 7, you know, 360, that is all we do. We don't do anything else. We do football, soccer, that's it. That's great. And with that, I mean, that's perfect, man. That's, thank, you, thank you for your time. And thank you to Umbro for have, you know, uh, having us at their office right here in Times Square. You can see the background. Uh, Hector, thank you very much. Uh, it's, been, it's been a pleasure. Uh, soccer Senseis, Rigo Salazar, Elisa Tunda. Victor Estrada from Umbro. I know we gotta buy. Uh, 
All right. Peace.